Hey guys, Tim here, and you'll hear me and Bob talk a, quite a bit about packs and different ideas that the two of us have concerning packs. Uh, I wanted to share some of mine with you today. Uh, you'll hear a lot of people tell you a lot of different things, and they'll tell you, you need this, you need that, you absolutely have to have this. But what I've learned over time, and I've done this for a lot of years, and, uh, and I've developed all my gear around an area in Southern Oregon called the Sky Lakes Basin. It's an extremely harsh, and it's, it's, it's some pretty serious business in there. Uh, we've been hit by, um, by freak, freak blizzards, quicksand, hornets, bears, rattlesnakes, and uh, uh, flash floods, uh, you name it, we, and, and, and mosquito storms, believe it or not. So all of our gear between me and my buddy Roy and my buddy Bob, we developed around the Sky Lakes Basin because we figured anything that could happen to us in there is going to be covered anywhere else we could possibly go. Anyhow, uh, what I've learned over time and even packing in that area is to get rid of the things you don't need. Don't once you figure out what you do need, try to scale down, lighten up your pack. You don't need a whole lot of things. Uh, all I have in here, this is what I would commonly call a day pack, and uh, you know I have a few amenities in here, so just in case I was stranded overnight or a few nights or even a week, I could I could get by. Uh, I've got a Leatherman tool in here, and it has quite a bit of different uh, functions for me. I've got a powerful flashlight, I've got a backup flashlight, and uh, I just do not like magnesium uh, starters. So I just use a common lighter, and then I have a backup lighter. Uh, this is a uh, this is a, a, a drinking straw that I, it's got a filter and I can drink right straight out of a, a, a muddy mud puddle and uh, I can be just fine with that. Um, one of your most important tools when you're out there, compass. Never go out without a compass. And what you can do with your compass and, uh, and so I, I have a camel pack uh, of water that's in this pack and I don't need a whole lot of water I don't even have to fill it the whole way to go in there and what I wanted to share with you is I hunt in one of the nastiest deserts in Oregon it's dry and it's desolate it's hot and it's sweltering but uh, I don't need to pack a lot of water because I can navigate my way through on this map and I know where all the springs are I know where all the creeks are and if I need water in a pinch, as long as I don't lose my bearing, I'm good. And uh, I refill my water while I'm out there in the field. And it's, you have to know your water sources, what water is safe, what water can you use. And try to, try to figure that out ahead of time to where you're either going to bug out or, or the area where you're going to be hunting, that you're going to be in, know, where, know everything, all the aspects about where you're going. Okay. All right, an older guy gave me some of these, and uh, it's a uh, lidocaine patches, and uh, these. This is for uh, for your back or your legs when you get out there. You've walked for a long time and you're sore. I don't know why I have that to tell you the truth. And uh, now here's something I've used lotion a lot because the desert sucks the moisture right out of your skin, and lip balm is nice to have too. It's, it's nice to be comfortable while you're out there. Now I've got got a hat for the sun and uh, I've got my heavy heavy gloves for freezing temperatures. I've got a very basic uh, first aid kit and uh, I've got some uh, some tablets that I can drop in water if I need to, to clean water in a pinch. But that's really is about it. Uh, besides that I carry a few hunting knives and my pistol 
in here and that's really it that's that's all I need for what I would consider a bug out pack besides just a little bit of food some snacks uh, jerky different things uh, some fruit yeah, just just to get me by okay guys now this is a different story this is uh, this is a pack for a week uh, if I'm planning on being in the wilderness for a week which I've done in the Sky Lakes Basin and you're going to be doing a lot of walking so try to keep as much weight off of you as possible just take the things you need this right here this is my tent that's it it hardly takes up any room in there my tent is tiny uh, this is my sleeping bag two and a half pounds small easy to pack uh, got my toothbrush lotion my comb amenities everything here that I need for that uh, in case I get hit by a, a freak rainstorm which has happened out there I've got my rain jacket and uh, I've got an emergency tent emergency blanket and a floaty believe it or not you wouldn't think one of these would come in handy but I've had to float my pack and me across a body of water to save time Now here's something uh, that I, I've come to really like. This is all I use to prepare it, prepare my food. Uh, this is called a military mess pan. And uh, check that out. You got your frying pan, and uh, you got your serving tray. And this might seem kind of cheesy, but I've got my spoon, my fork, my uh, corkscrew, bottle opener, can opener, everything is right in here. Okay, okay and uh, here's, here's some waterproof pants. Uh, I don't really need this anymore. I think I'm going to park this. This is one thing I, like I was explaining, dump as much weight as you can. This is a military park, it doesn't work that well. Anyway, uh, I've got a beanie. Now this is important. Never go anywhere. Never go out in the office without the paperwork. Uh, in case it's cold, I've got a, uh, this is a very warm jacket, uh, It's but it's very compressible. This can keep you comfortable and in a, in, a, in a storm. Uh, orange tape. If I'm lost, I need to tape different areas that I've been so I don't circle back and end up covering the same territory that I've already been in. Now this, this I actually like these. Uh, it's A lot of people would say this is outdated, but man do they work and I still love it. This is from the 1960s and uh, goes on just like this they're they're warm and uh, they don't take up a lot of room in your pack either I've got a little bit of soap in this pocket I've got my first aid uh, it's a bit more advanced than my uh, my day pack first aid because I'm going to be out there at risk for quite a bit longer uh, this this pocket this is all my fire starting equipment in here and I've got quite a bit of that, and I've got backup fire equipment as well. Uh, I've got my flashlights in here. This is all flashlights. Here, all fishing equipment for uh, you never know. I'm always going to be around some kind of a lake or a pond. I can always take advantage of, uh, of the resource of fishing when I have to. But, but this is the key, and oh, here's, here's some other important things that you can have in your pack as well. Winter survival manual. I have, uh, I have several survival guides in here. I have a guide on, on what kind of plants to avoid, what are poisonous, what look like they could be good but they're not. Uh,
Here you go. You see an airplane? Boom. That could help you out. Now here's something else I have is a pad for writing notes and keeping track of different things. Uh, a notepad. It's nice to have a notepad. And I keep that right on the top here. And uh, this, this is good for, uh, for any information you want to keep track. You can go back and, and uh, look at some of the information that, you, that may have not crossed your mind at the time. Vital information that you could need. Uh, besides that, uh, you know, this is an older pack, so it has a metal frame, but it's what's comfortable to me. I, I really like this pack. <clears throat> uh, I've had it for about 25 years, and this is what I'm sticking with. Um, I have to pack my own water in here, but I don't need a lot because, again, everywhere I go, I always have maps and I, I pre track everything ahead of time. So I know where all the natural springs are going to be in all the creeks. Anyhow, these are just some ideas that I have for you, and I hope some of this helps you out. Hey guys, Tim here. I wanted to talk about uh, some things I like to carry in my pack. Uh, now, what do you do if you're in the woods and you have absolutely no way to weld, and it's imperative that you weld something, and you have no welding equipment, nothing? What do you do? Well, this is a, it's a little item called called weld. And I'll show you how this works. And uh, this is usually about the time some guy burns himself up on YouTube, but I'm going to try not to be that guy. Okay, so here's our two adjoining pieces of metal that we need to weld here. There we go. It just liquefied that metal. Got to be real careful. Clearly, I used too much. Um, next time, I'll use about a quarter of that amount. But uh, really handy stuff out in the field. 